let the real deal now. Ooh. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> that what you got? You think you own the street. We're back to back and your ass is dead meat. That's right, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It is the return of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on the Holes Bard Wrestling Podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're your Canadian-based RWB podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown, and 205 Live from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment, Luke Gallus Polls, which is missing this week. We'll get into that in a second. And WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in WWE, and we have lots of news this week for y'all. So, get ready for it. Enjoy. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after it is done recording, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker and on YouTube. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you and for you to listen to us. And as you've noticed, Podbean is not there anymore. Um, I've gotten rid of it. I don't need it anymore. I, as for the recent poll we have gave to you guys, you guys just listen to us on YouTube, and that's perfectly okay with us. So if you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read in the podcast, tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP and drop a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Hope you all had a corporate... Uh, New Year's. Corporate New Year's. Didn't get in any, what's a, any what's trouble. A corp, what's a corporate New Year's? Thing? Yeah, you know, not getting in any trouble, you know. Get get some nice ties for, for New Year's and Christmas, you know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you, know, you, go, you, go, you show up to your New Year's uh, celebration in a suit and tie is that corporate yeah i'd love that and, and maybe it may be a fight you know you'll be not maybe not fully corporate you know you can have a little party hat on top with me the 2017 glasses office christmas party-esque yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen that movie like go that. check it out oh my god we saw it and it's freaking hilarious that movie made us like literally piss our pants man that was just great <laughs> um so yeah if you haven't checked it out guys go see office christmas party i think we missed like a smackdown or something for that didn't we uh yeah we did we missed smackdown one oh week. god nah, and, and i and i i missed smackdown yesterday or the other day god it's just we're, we're missing the wrong show <laughs> god and you, and you got some corporate <laughs> oh, news yeah. this week too unfortunately i had to pick up a class for next semester that i needed to take and it happens to be from 6 30 to 9 30 on tuesday night <laughs> it couldn't be on monday night raw Couldn't, gotta be on tuesday couldn't give me a reason to miss raw and watch that dumpster fire of a show <laughs> no it has to be the good show that i have to miss every week uh, yeah you know, you'll be able to catch 205 live when you get home you know oh. yeah but sm- i want to watch smackdown i love smackdown i yeah. want to see my girl alexa bliss kick ass and, yeah i understand you know aj styles and everyone on there i love that show yeah, maybe I'll, I'll have to tune in on like a, a corporate stream like yeah, at know, and during class you have to watch the replay <laughs> oh. the next days or, or what whatnot but hey you'll you'll, you'll you'll figure it out i'm sure you will but uh, i'll live definitely some corporate news for you this week yep but uh guys welcome to the lowdown show and it's been a couple of weeks since we've done this i think uh, back in the first week of december so we are officially in week 39 of the lowdown show brand wars if we had it continued but we had for you your slammies in the year in review if you haven't re- haven't listened to those go back and listen to them we did great episodes longest episode i think it was the longest podcast we've yep. ever done those two shows um we had to split the year in review year in review in two episodes that's how long it was <laughs> you had to take a break but it was great i like i enjoyed that it was awesome yeah um so this week we're on smackdown we're the rating wars continues as last week we had smackdown winning for the first time in television ratings it's interesting um they deserved it, and it looks like Raw. And it was just just by looking at the next two Raws, like this week and next week, it doesn't look like Vince is too happy about that, and he's doing it. It looks like he's doing whatever he can to to boost Raw up by you know adding Goldberg this week, going back to the cookie jar because he then, can't build his own stars. Yeah, and uh, Jer or uh, Jericho, uh, HBK, Undertaker next week. Undertaker was supposed to be a SmackDown, I guess, superstar is appearing on Raw. I don't know what the fuck going on there. But, uh, yeah, interesting. Um, first week, SmackDown's beat Raw in the ratings. This is a brand split happening. Um, Both time. This week, I would have to say SmackDown. But, again, it's going to go back to it, w- in our in our news. I guess I'm not going to bring up videos. We're just bringing it up now. Raw won this week. Again, the TV ratings, which is bullshit. And that's dual- solely due to fucking Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> God, I just I honestly think Vince just stacks Raw on purpose to beat SmackDown. Yeah. So AKA Goldberg and Undertaker and HBK. Yeah, he's bringing back all these old timers to try and get get people to tune into Raw. 
It, it's, it's ridiculous. Like it, Vince just can't let go of his fucking ego for one week, and he just he sees Blue Brand winning. Goes, oh shit! You know, Don, what do we gotta do? We gotta, we gotta do something. Oh no, Vince! Let's bring back Undertaker and HBK. Oh but yeah, it, uh, let's it, get it Hulk no Hogan. Uh, he can he didn't even say the Edward. Okay, Vince. Uh, enough with the goon voice, but <laughs> um. It makes no sense because he owns both anyway, so it's not like he's it's a competition. Yeah, he for wants him. still Raw to be flagship show. SmackDown basically has been in our minds and the minds of you guys out there. It's been the better show, and it, it, it's it, you look at this week like Raw again. The middle hour continues to bore the fucking shit out of me, and it just produce useless nonsense like what fucking Enzo and Cass did this week, and just other hot garbage that they spewed out on Raw this week, which is terrible. The middle hour is boring. I you fall asleep during that middle hour, and they they expect people to keep watching up until you you look at. I went and looked at this. This is interesting for this week. What the viewership was for the first for the three hours of Raw. The highest peak was the beginning, middle part, it decreased slightly a bit, and then it went all the way down to 2.8 by the third hour. Because people don't give a fuck. When you start to bore them in the middle of Raw, they're not going to continue to watch that. They're going to flip the channel to something else that catches their eye. Say, oh, fuck, nothing's going to happen on Raw. Look, it's boring. They're they're showing Enzo come out in a fucking scooter. Like, oh, wow, great. I wanted to see that this week. (laughs) You just have no direction with any. Like, everything's just a jumbled mess. Yeah, and you look at SmackDown later. You want to keep watching SmackDown because even after a segment's done or a match is done on SmackDown, if they have to cut to a commercial break, they leave you on a cliffhanger that makes you want to stay and watch when the commercial comes back. That's what they got to do with Raw, but they continue not to do that. And it's, it's literally just. Raw has become the shittiest show. It's it's literally reversed to what it was before the brand split. I used to hate SmackDown because it was crap and <laughs> praise Raw, but now I'm doing the complete opposite. <laughs> it just oh, I love the show they had after Raw though. We got a question from Chad. We'll get into, um, but I love that thing they did on the network after. Um, but SmackDown was great once again. But the casual crowd this week took a lot out of it, especially in the 205 Live. It was fucking horrendous. Jacksonville, you just made the list. You just made Corporate Cappy's list of terrible crowds, and it's an extensive list. And Jacksonville, you've been added because, goddamn, that was pathetic. When you know a crowd is casual as fuck, ladies and gentlemen, when you when you you hear us talking about that, when John Cena comes out and not one person is singing "John Cena sucks," casual central, and he's being cheered. No, no, no. Any other city that's a good city. He's getting booed the shit out of. <laughs> okay, there was like, yeah, there's okay. Of course, there's like at least ten percent people there in Jacksonville that hated John Cena. We couldn't hear them. <laughs> Fucking kids overpowered everything. It was just, oh, it's garbage. It took so much out of SmackDown from a good show this week. Yeah, like, the crowd five, does like. take a toll. Like it makes a difference if it's a casual crowd or not. Just look at two hundred five live. Like they were crickets yeah and i'm getting sick and tired of the fucking cena and reigns getting shoved down our throats week after week now well it's ever since john cena's come back he's the one being shoved down our throats on smackdown reigns continues because he you know he has somehow has to be in the main event every every time every goddamn fucking week he has he'll do something that has nothing to do with the main event and end up being in the main event regardless <laughs> you could have fucking the woman in the main Women. event he'd come out <laughs> he just come out for no reason you know just superman punch the referee or something like that i don't know Stupid, whatever reason. But we're not doing Luke Gallows polls this week, guys. Um, our boys at Fun WWE polls have been slacking, slacking on the polls, so I don't know. We may have to find another Twitter account, but maybe we'll return next week. So we'll just jump right into it. Um, your tweets out there for Raw. Um, a lot of tweets this week, actually. Uh, let's so let's get into them. Start off with Tony Mercer at Recram. Why not? He puts not a good Raw. Well, I can agree with you there. <laughs> they could have used Goldberg better and given the cruise rates more than two minute segments. I give it a five out of ten. Yes, they could have done something better with Goldberg, but the cruise rates, uh, I expected that. They're only there to like semi promote 205 Live, and Vince fucking hates the cruise rates, even though the rumors are that he runs 205 Live. Like they're literally just, no time on Raw. They're just going out there and like not doing anything different. They're just they're going out there to get a paycheck and that's it. It's it, they're doing the same shit that they've been doing the last couple of Raws. Nothing different. Just the same matches, same storylines. No. Why don't you do something to improve the two oh five live show? Do something like that. Don't give us the same goddamn match you see every goddamn week. TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick, and then we go over to two oh five live and he's facing Neville. Where the fuck did Brian Kendrick go? He got Green misted. That's what he did. God, it's, yeah, it made no. It just made no sense. Whatever. Um, next tweets. Gr- Glorious Greg 
The Jericho and Reigns match was good, it, and the ending of Raw was pretty cool. All in all, I give Raw a 5 out of 10. <laughs> Great, generous, interesting man. rating there, man. <laughs> That's generous. You have to. Re- I think you have to rewatch Raw this week. <laughs> Actually, don't save yourself some heart headache. <laughs> Just uh. unless you want a Monday night nap time. Yeah. Our New- boy Joshy Dominic has a Twitter account. He tweet at us. He only simply tweet us a GIF of Homer Simpson and Bart doing angels in a pile of garbage. <laughs> So Guess telling us that Raw was a fucking hot dumpster fire garbage mess. I, and I definitely agree with you, Josh Dominic. Thank you for that. Next week comes from Casey Salvis at Salvis94. Garbage show. <laughs> Reigns has no business keeping the U.S. title. Rest of the show was boring. One out of ten. SmackDown is better. Uh, our boy Casey always. just loves yep. ripping on Reigns. I love it. Yep. Uh, next set tweets tired irrelevance. His picture this week is a cat yawning. Um, <laughs> I'm more excited for SmackDown Neville versus TJP on 205, and even more excited for Wrestle Kingdom 11, which was last night, and I heard it was excellent. Uh, Carl Anderson getting a pin was a surprise, but I didn't expect Raw to be good. Anyway, three out of ten. <laughs> and I Seems wonder like the norm. Yeah, and I wonder how they'll continue the story. Maybe keeping Sammy off TV. Oh, okay. This goes into okay. My bad. I read that tweet backwards. He put shit beginning KO versus Rollins and Jericho versus Reigns. Same shit. Best thing on Raw was Sammy versus Braun. It was a good last man standing match in my opinion. And I wonder how they'll continue the story. Maybe keeping Sammy off TV storyline wise. I think though. I think he might. I think that'd be a good thing for him to do. Maybe come back at the Rumble as like don't see him till the Rumble and he, he or go to SmackDown. You no, know, that would help. Get him off Raw, man. He's just useless on Raw. Unless they're going to use him for a big uh, underdog storyline and crowning of him a champion. I doubt it, but... Yeah, I just say, I feel so bad for Sami Zayn, man. It's really bad. Poor guy almost got killed by Braun Strowman this week. Like, literally almost destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, I think we'll save those questions for the last part. So, we'll get into the last, que- uh, last thoughts about Raw. And that comes from our boy. You, you love so good to me. Oh. That's right. Real Michael Chow and his glorious entrance theme there of Chuck and Billy. Guys, if you're wondering why he has an entrance theme, he won our Twitter Fan of the Year for 2016. If you would like to have your own entrance theme for the Twitter tweets, then all you have to do is just interact and you know give us send us some good tweets send us <laughs> some, some funny ones gifts. some gifts whatever and then we, we decide then Lear who are Twitter fan Lear and they get their own entrance theme try to the try to the dethrone year. Michael Chow this year yeah try to dethrone him current champ and he goes four to ten <laughs> you put a flame hot flaming emoji meaning dumpster fire thank you Michael Chow for the current hashtag for this podcast hashtag dumpster fire. Would have scored higher if Goldberg had speared Reigns and would have made Goldberg look stronger going into the Rumble. Hashtag Monday Night Nap Time. That's my new official hashtag. Yep. (laughs) Michael Charles puts pros. Titus gives the promo of his life. Hashtag Dummy Brand Rocks. I kind of agree. You know, he had a better promo than he's ever had in like the last year. And Bailey breaks Nia Jax's raw undefeated streak after a hug from the top rope. It's true. Is her raw undefeated streak came to an end this week? I can't believe that. Interesting. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Con Super Reigns and Ref beat the match of Jericho. Boo it in, man. (laughs) Goldberg segment good. Very lousy Vince type of ending. Question: Opinion on the Bring It to the Table show? Now is what I was saying earlier. JBL says Raw is three hours to bring more money. Then shouldn't Total Divas be three hours? Hashtag WWE fail. I didn't mind the show, but I thought they were very disrespectful to Rosenberg. Oh my and god, that far, like, literally it was like two on one there, like, and like they were just ganging up on him and the fans, like we do, like we don't matter kind yeah. of thing, like saying like we don't know what we're talking about. You know, we but do. Clearly, there's something going on. Um, Raw shouldn't be three hours. I think a hundred percent of the fans out there would agree that Raw shouldn't be three According hours. According to Paul Heyman, it's because it generates so much revenue. Well. What? What do you mean? You just look. I just told. Listen to what I just said. The ratings just decrease th- when the show goes on longer. And it decreases by the third hour. And then JBL goes on and says, 
uh, you need, or maybe it was Paul Heyman, you need the crew, they have the cruiserweights now, which is four segments. I'm like, tell me where they have four segments of cruiserweights. No, they don't. They they have at least two, which not, lasts two not minutes. Not one. Which lasts like two minutes. Yeah, I, I don't know where the hell, literally it's like, I think JBL and Paul Heyman were force fed to say all that crap. To take it. It's like Vince jabbing at all us fans right yeah, now. Yeah, they were the corporate yes men brought in to say that kind of. So stuff. I liked the show, but then I didn't like the the, the whole two on one on Rosenberry. I kind of sucked, but I I think the show has some potential if they actually make it good and not be corporate as they fucking were this week. So it was. I think th- I think they weren't allowed to say what they actually wanted to say. Yeah. So we'll see where it goes after that. So we'll get into the SmackDown tweets this week, and we have a, a lot this week actually. Glorious Greg, but surprising to me. Oh, I'm reading this backwards again. All right, I got it right. <laughs> Another great show by SmackDown. Cena and Styles' contract signing was amazing. Cena's promo was gold. Ziggler's character shift is something to keep an eye on. Corbin started the year off right, and I look forward to seeing him facing Cena next week. The whole story with finding out the identity of Lula Luchadora is an interesting twist, and Ambrose winning the IC title was surprising to me, but I like surprises, so this week I give SmackDown a 10 out of 10, and I'm looking forward to next week's show. It really was an intriguing show. Mm-hmm. It makes you want to tune in next week. Yep, Glorious Ray, thank you for those tweets. We definitely agree with you there. Tired Irrelevance puts the show. is This show is why I like WWE programming. 10 out of 10, only cons are Brazongo getting squashed, and the ending... But then I thought, oh, Miz can just reverse the decision because of bias ref out- outing Maurice instead of deep doing a DQ. Things can get really interesting on how it, they take it. Miz can get lawyers, storyline, etc. This is why I like SmackDown because there's tons of things to look forward to in the future. The show after the next always pulls you in to see. 10 out of 10. Yeah, it, dry, it pulls you back in to watch the next week. That's yep. what I'm saying. It's exactly, exactly irrelevant. It's taking the words right out of her mouth. Tony Mercer, interesting episode. I give it a 7 out of 10, but it was a very solid show. The verbal sparring between Cena and Styles was great. Hmm, okay. Good uh, good rain there. Still beating Raw. <laughs> That's all that matters. Josh D. Dominic simply just gives us this perfect gif of Ty Dillinger <laughs> raising the 10 sign. <laughs> Love it. Uh, few more words coming from Josh D. Dominic, but his gifts certainly tell a story. They do. Uh, next tweet comes from Casey Salvis. Amazing show. Every segment was interesting. Unlike Raw, there's no doubt that SmackDown is a is the A show. Ten out of ten. A lot of perfect freaking tens ratings this week. this week. Crazy how Smack. This is how good SmackDown is. Well, you want to start off 2017 with something good, and they did. They kind of blew Raw way out of the water for the first uh, shows of 2017. They they fucking soaked the water dry. Yep. <laughs> Simply put. <laughs> Uh, next and last set of tweets comes from Michael Chow. He puts 9.5 out of 10. Would have been a hashtag perfect 10 if it wasn't for the early slammy vote for worst feud of the year in Natty and Nikki. Well, I, know, I like that feud, though. It, it, it got really, good. really personal this week, so I think there's some potential Who there. said that? Uh, Michael Chow. Come on, Michael Chow. You got to get into this women's feud, man. You don't like Natty. It rip- got personal this week, and I think it, it, it's, it's I, definitely I love it. awesome. I, when anyone rips on Nikki Bella, I just give it a 10 out of 10 because it's <laughs> fucking phenomenal. Everyone just needs to rip on uh, Nikki Bella more. Yep. Michael Chow also puts, can we talk about how good AJ is on the mic? He's phenomenal, Michael Chow. He's fucking just the best. Pardon the pun. When he's allowed to give him, when W gives him the, it, the ability to break the fourth wall, he's just amazing. Um that was the best honest promo against Cena I've ever heard. Hashtag give up Cena. He puts the <laughs> gif of Cena going, Ooh, what the fuck? Uh, pros, AJ makes Cena tap to his new finisher, the phenomenal promo. <laughs> and hashtag Corbin Revolution is running wild. Oh, yeah. Corbin Revolution. And he, hashtag Heel Ziggler is back, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wouldn't say completely yet. I want to see what yeah, he says. Yeah, uh, It'd be awesome if he is. Ha- uh, cons Brazongo fill the in fill in for the vaude villains in the best of the buried alive series <laughs> and natty and nikki go to the bathroom go get food show <laughs> and michael child gotta give him a little bit more credit though just saying uh, i think it's, it has a serious potential i know they so didn't really a secondary do anything, feud. but it got really goddamn personal this week what they said yeah. this week my lord um michael charles was predicting prediction of the final four and final two of the Royal rumble can't ask us that, man. You gotta wait for our prediction show. Can't yeah. give you that right now. We're not gonna give you no free predictions yeah. here. But his uh, his picks are Rollins, Strowman, Undertaker, and Corbin for the final four. 
yeah, I can see that. And his final two, Taker and Strowman. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. That's a that's in Taker would win, obviously, unless they fucking went the Strowman route, which they're not, because I already know what's going on. Vince's set in stone matches this year are God, Shaquille O'Neal versus the Big Show. Match of the year. Uh, Rollins versus Triple H. And Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. And I know I think Michael Child puts Braun Strowman because I honestly why do I have a feeling that it's gonna be Strowman versus Reigns for the fucking universal, universal title? title. I don't have a fucking lose my mind if it is. I'm <sighs> gonna boycott that match at Mania. Like I really don't care for that. Yes, people can criticize me and say, oh, Strowman's finally getting a break now and he's not squashing people. Yeah, but he's going to fucking squash Roman Reigns. I mean, I could get behind that, but it's not something I want to see at WrestleMania. That's like a fast lane main event or something like that. Don't put that at fucking WrestleMania. I don't want to see it. And that's that's going to be the main event. Reigns would be the one to squash him. God. Um, Knowing WWE's route, I'm going to say Roman Reigns is the final four. All four members. Yeah. And I'm not, he wins I'm not it. my predictions. Nope. No, Roman Reigns is all four. He's the last four yeah. guys. He wins it, and he wins the title. So he wins everything. <laughs> Why not? Give Roman Reigns every goddamn title. Um, who trans Superman gives us an interesting question. Is Raw panicking? Needed to bring in HBK's... Need to bring in HBK and SmackDown's Undertaker in next week to help ratings with no Monday Night Football. This is true. There's no Monday Night Football for Raw to compete with next week, and they're still bringing in Taker and Undertaker and uh, HBK. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I, I agree with them. I think they are panicking. I think they're really scared that SmackDown's going to win again, and there really is no need to bring both of them back next week. Like they're already going to announce WrestleMania twenty four next or thirty four next week because it's in fucking New Orleans. We'll get that in our new segment. Um, I don't understand why they need to bring both guys on the same show. It's because they're getting desperate. They need people to tune in because clearly what they're showing on a weekly basis is not good enough. Why, why not just bring back HBK? That's fine enough. Why to just bring back Undertaker on the SmackDown next week? Why does he have to be on fucking Raw? He's a SmackDown superstar, is he not? Did he get drafted to SmackDown? No, but he came out and said that whole thing about Team SmackDown winning yeah, the Survivor the Series. Anyways, uh, Glorious Greg puts, would you guys prefer to see Kevin Owens versus Goldberg at WrestleMania for the Universal title or Reigns versus Goldberg? Reigns versus Goldberg or who? Or Kevin Owens versus Goldberg. How about neither? I If I had to pick one, Reigns versus Goldberg, Spear versus Spear. <laughs> That's it. You know, you can make a story out of that, but whatever. It'd be a but, shitty story, but it's, I would pick that because I don't want to see my boy Owens face Goldberg because he gets squashed. Why? Um, we'll get into that main event. I got a lot of, I got a lot to rant about with the main event this week. <laughs> I'm fucking raw tonight. So uh, let's get into it then. Actually, our, our boy Tyler Jones, 22, oh. just uh, oh, sent me a in, couple in, pictures. Incoming, uh, incoming Not, no pictures. tweets, but he sent me a couple pictures. He got his WWE shop order today. Oh, what and he got wearing? a fight Owens fight shirt, his Sami Zayn nice. shirt, and he just sent me his gift and the gift of Jericho shirt. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> smart man right there, smart man Tyler Jones. And he said, "Just need a raw." There you go. That's your roar for the week. Mm, sure. Since he loves Braun yeah. Strowman so much, and he says, "Where's my Strowman T-shirt?" I don't know, man. <laughs> He's getting squashed Strowman somewhere. Ate it. He ate it. <laughs> We got some news about Strowman later you're going to want to tune yeah, into um, for all you Braun Strowman fans out there. At the 404? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> kidding. Kidding. All right. Let's get into the Raw review. The first Raw of 2017. <laughs> and we open up with a brand new McFoley. And he's got a new haircut and beard. Can I say it? But what the fuck? He still looks like a lumberjack hobo. <laughs> new year, new me, McFoley. <laughs> God, oh, I hate that saying. I fucking hate all typical you, white girl typical saying. What New Year? Uh, to be. I hear this bullshit every year at this time, and I'm like, no, no, no. You're gonna say that now. Next week you're gonna be the same fucking bitch you were. It's exactly what Ra before. is. Ra says yeah. New Year, New Me, and then they're for the, the same exact same garbage. The last couple of weeks, yeah. Ooh, no, that. Mick Foley's still looking like a lost lumberjack hobo out there. Um, <laughs> talks about the shark cage. Mm, Owen and Jericho Owens and Jericho interrupt him and say Foley is abusing his power in terms of Reigns getting a title shot against Owens and Rollins getting away with his attacks on Jericho. Um, Jericho talks about the shark cage and calls it the shark cage of Jericho. Lock him in, man. He says it like crying, almost crying. <laughs> uh, Foley says they're gonna uh, they're going to have the first ever Kevin Owens show on Monday Night Raw. Great, wow, fucking sick booking. 
with his first guest, Goldberg. Ooh, wow. Big man Foley booking some great, great raw main events right here. Um, Stephen McMahon then comes out, says Foley has every right to make his decisions except for the shark cage. And he wish uh, Foley had a consulted with Stephanie. Then Foley says that uh, this the same thing to Stephanie, but in except it's for the Sami Zayn situation. She wishes here he wishes that she would have consulted with him because Foley doesn't want Zayn in a last man standing match. Um, it's interesting because I actually thought that Foley would have booked that, but it ended up being Stephanie last week, which is you know whatever. Um, Stephanie books then Reigns versus Jericho for the U.S. title, and if Reigns gets DQ'd or count out, he will lose the title. I thought they finally realized what they should have done two weeks ago. Yeah, and I th- we thought for sure that okay, Jericho's winning the title for sure. He's finally going to get every title in the WWE, and it would have been awesome. And he should be U.S. champion because fuck Roman Reigns. Um, then he books Owens versus uh, Rollins. Loser will be banned from ringside. Fully botched here. He's like. Like he said that like he's like uh, Owens versus Jericho or something like that or Rollins or uh, what did he say? Yeah, o- it, Owens versus Rollins and the lo- and the loser would make Jericho banned from ringside even though he's in the match. He said he just he botched really bad. <laughs> I don't know if he did it on purpose because he he's botched still in, last week. He's still in the Christmas season, you know. I guess. So we'll get into that. They start off with that Owens versus Rollins loser. It gets banned from ringside for the U.S. title match. Um, it was a pretty good match, actually. Some argue that this match was given away uh, because it was a pay-per-view quality match, and it shouldn't have been given away like that on Raw. Um, Owens hits Rollins with the ring bell for the DQ after this pretty good God, match. Fucking useless. <laughs> and it's, and it escapes for, the pedigree and then runs away. For two great wrestlers, they are giving me reasons not to give a fuck about either of them right now. It, it was bad. I think they could have had a better number. They should have started with the U.S. title match. If, if Kick it if, off with a bang. Yeah, if if what was going to happen in that match happened, if I knew it was going to happen beforehand, I would have been like, okay, no. The, nat- the U.S. title should have started because what we got at the ending of that fucking match was terrible. And we'll get into that after. Then we had uh, Cesaro versus Carl Anderson, which was a sick match. But for some reason, I, I want to know what the fuck. I have no idea how this made sense. Sheamus was on commentary. And then Luke Gallows is at ringside. Why the fuck were both of them not at ringside? I think Cesaro told him Sheamus he didn't want him to be there. Oh. Well, that's great. And to me, it just fucking looked like a clusterfuck. Into the match, though. Unreal. Both guys are incredible wrestlers. I think Anderson deserves to be in the mid-card eventually. Guy's such a great wrestler. We know, everyone knows if they know Carl Anderson, what he's come from in New Japan. He's a exceptional wrestler he has the talent to be in that mid card level see his finisher my god god it would help elevate it for raw definitely that slacking in the mid card level it would definitely help elevate but the club has so much potential too but WWE's not using that properly so near the end of this match gallows basically helps anderson win and and carl anderson fucking won a match a singles match and he beat cesaro wow this goes back to the what you said carl anderson has more wins 2017 singles competition than he did all of 2016. All of 2016. That's he's always sad. the guy to lose in singles matches all the yeah. time. So hopefully both teams have a good 2017 because Jesus Christ, man. They, Raw needs help with these guys because they're slowly fading away. Like the club is slowly fading away. Well, I think now that New Day is out of the picture, maybe we, the club might get a chance at the title. I hope so. And I'm actually intrigued by the Cesaro, Sheamus, and Club feud, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I think it, I think it's as possibly be a good feud. I really hope this just elevates from here. I hope they do something with it. it they, I mean, we know on SmackDown they would get the chance. <laughs> Being on Raw, they don't give a fuck. Watch, next week it'll be Rusev and Jinder Mahal against the club and be like, how the fuck does this make any sense? Why <laughs> Why did they just suddenly stop feuding with Enzo and Cass and come over to the title picture? They need to stick with their feuds. If they want to follow the same formula as SmackDown, stick to those feuds. Yeah, people jumping all over the place. No one's going to care. And stop having short matches. That's what's ruining the three hours Raw. You have three hours Raw. They're acting like they only have a two-hour gap. That's why all these matches are so quick. You have three fucking hours. It's terrible. It just doesn't make sense. But I, I like Anderson getting the win. Yeah. It actually gives the club some credibility. Yeah, I agree. Even though it was on Cesaro. So I assume next week, because WWE is so creative, it's going to be Luke Gallows versus Sheamus next week. And then with the exact Cesaro's same on reversal. commentary, and Carl Anderson's at ringside. Yep, guaranteed. 
Or Carl Anderson on mic or on on a commentary in Cesaro at ringside. Such a seer prediction, man! Like, wow. <laughs> you hear your first guys. It's gonna happen next week, and you're gonna go back and go, oh, yep, yeah, corporate Cappy said exactly that. I mean, anyone could see that coming. Yeah, I know. I'm not a genius. It's, it's a typical raw thing to do. Yep. Um, move on to the last man standing match: Braun Strowman versus Sami Zayn. Why? Oh, why does this need to fucking happen? I don't know. How many times do we have to fucking see Sami Zayn get squashed week after week after week until it just gets stale as shit like I think it is right now? Can he just get shipped to SmackDown already? Because they don't fucking need him on Raw. I Zayn think, is useless on Raw. I think this is it for his squash. I think like this was supposed to be like the final beatdown. I hope so. Because I, I, I honestly don't fuck it. If someone could tell me what the point of him getting squashed for like the last month and a half, please tell me because I have fucking no idea. To make Braun Strowman look stronger. Yeah. I f- Stupid. Bottom line, that's stupid. You, you can't look strong after squashing Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn is like three times lower than your weight. You can eat Sami Zayn for fucking breakfast. And you're squashing for a month and a half. Oh, yeah, fuck. Braun Strowman needs a title shot after this. 100%. He beat Sami Zayn for a month and a half. Oh, good for him. Like, why is no. he not facing these big guys? I don't know. Yeah, where's Big Show? I thought he's getting in shape and shit. Where's he at? <laughs> yeah, we saw him two weeks ago, and he, then no sign no. of him after that. No, why didn't, he, why didn't he come out and try to punch Braun Strowman? <laughs> why does he have to get prepared to face Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> Are they fucking retarded? <laughs> like, what is this? Anyways, brutal match. It was longer than expected. There's a lot of... Uh, I know what the, what's his face was saying. Uh, Greg was saying uh, he enjoyed it. There's a lot of good spots, I, I admit. Obviously, Strowman was going to win, though. Absolutely fucking destroyed Zayn at the end. Two power slams on the outside. Like, I thought Zayn's back, back was going to be all disconfigured after that. Like, he literally power slammed this shit. Like, British Bulldog style, power slammed him on the outside. Um, and that was it. Count 10. And they brought the stretcher out. Yeah, even after getting on the stretcher, he, gets, he just squashed again. He gets pushed off the stretcher and thrown into the barricade. <laughs> like, really? Is that necessary? It's He's seen this for like the last month and a half. <laughs> God. And as he's walking away, Braun Strowman's like, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Wow. Oh. Ooh. God, <laughs> great lines there. Mick Foley standing there, like, great Foley. Look what you did. Fantastic. Look what you did to Sammy. You just job Sammy Zayn, who should be main event caliber right now. But no, he gets fed to Braun Strowman. What do you do to get fed to Braun Strowman? For <laughs> he he lost that uh, at Survivor Series when Maurice tapped the bell, you know? Really, he's getting punished for that still. <laughs> Unbelievable. Next. Uh, Tyus O'Neill tries to join the New Day oh my at this God. point. This, this right here looked like it was going to be a complete dumpster fire. <laughs> we, we, we were just talking about it like 10 minutes before this came on. We're like, remember when Titus O'Neill got that one time on the mic and he completely yeah. botched it? And then he, they, we saw him coming out with a yeah. mic and, and we're like, like oh, no, oh, no. But it ended up being okay. Um New Day's talking in the ring about the their year in 2016. He gets interrupted by Titus doing a New Day style entrance. Um, I guess it's actually him that does it for the New Day. I read. I don't know if that's true or not. If you guys know, let me know. But I read that it's Titus O'Neil that does the New Day intro, and I'm like, uh, okay, because he did it, and it kind of almost sounded like it. But it kind of like he it sounded like he was doing it on purpose to not sound exactly like what the New Day entrance is. So it's gonna be interesting to see because I, I apparently I read that someone said on WWE Snapchat it showed Titus doing it. Well, but maybe good. they saw it and they thought it was for the New Day, but it ended up being no, for, it was his for him because he did his own. Yeah, so who knows? Um, anyways, Titus tries to audition and then, uh, <laughs> for the, tries to audition for the New Day, but New Day's not having any of it. He fails. Um, this leads to a match with Xavier Woods. Okay, heaven forbid it's it's Big E. You know, Xavier Woods versus Titus O'Neil is a oh no fair because contest Titus, because Titus. Called him out as being the weak link of New Day. Yeah, but still, like, what the, when Big E step up for Xavier Woods there? That's a team. That's a team thing to do. But Xavier Woods actually beat fucking Tyus O'Neill. Wow. On a small package. On a small... On a guy like that, really... They really just don't give a fuck about Titus O'Neill anymore. I really, really have nothing else to say. This was literally just another spot filler. And they used the New Day, who was like their team of the year for WWE. And they used Titus O'Neill, who's become a jobber now. The tussle in Texas 2.0 over here. This is just really bad. Really bad again. Uh, this is in the, in the middle the, of Raw where I was bored as shit. The, the segment was kind of funny, but the match was just garbage. And I can understand why people didn't like the whole thing. Okay, the, the segment, yeah, comedic relief, sure. But, but let's move yeah, on. I'm done talking about no. it. 
Uh, we got Stephanie and Bailey backstage. Um, and I talk about this because it was a decent promo. This is basically it looks like they're this is the start where Bailey's gonna get the Daniel Bryan treatment heading into her WrestleMania match. Um, basically, Steph is saying that she's not as good as Charlotte. Um, Bailey saying she may not come from a wrestling family, but she's still that good. Stephanie wants Bailey to prove it and books her in a number one contenders match with Nia Jax. So, what did Nia Jax do to earn this title? This uh, number one contender match. She's been off TV. For God you knows know, how you long. You know how she earned it? Remember when we were Survivor Series? She, like, bulldozed through everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, you know, that 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 equates to a t- uh, you know number one contender. I don't know. I don't, who else is getting a number one contender's match, though? Dana Brooke? Like, she's she's Charlotte's protege. There's no way that's going to happen yet. Like, who else is there? Alicia. I thought Tamino was supposed to be back. Where the hell is she? Alicia Fox. There's nope, Noam Dar. She's on 205 Live. <laughs> what does Noam Dar got to... Do his O's like that. And uh, speaking of, Cedric Alexander faced Drew Gulak in the Cruiserweight match oh, for Raw. Oh, my boy Tony Neat. At yeah, ringside. ringside. I call him Gulak. Tony Neat because he's very neat. He's very neat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is basically whatever you want to call it. Um, so are Drew Gulak and Tony Neat a team? I guess. I guess you call them a team on 205. Who, what other team is on 205 Live? The Bollywood Boys that we saw once. Oh, yeah. We saw once and never saw again. Um, so I guess this is just showing that Cedric Alexander can't win with Alicia Fox at wing, ringside because she basically cost him the match, and that was it. She, he needs to get rid of her, man. Yeah. Because Cedric Alexander, I know you like him a lot, but he's not going to get anywhere having this I know. It's bullshit stupid. feud with I can't Noam believe they, they've put him up to this. But whatever, just get rid he, of her, Cedric Alexander. You don't need her. Don't bring the girl. Don't let the girl bring you down, man. I thought he was going to be the one in the like the main title picture to, to start. And like you said, he might need a new theme song. Yeah, it's it's okay. Hopefully they remix it or better or something. I don't know. Let's move on. Reigns versus Jericho for the U.S. title. Oh seat. my god. Okay, we love this the idea of Jericho winning here, but s again. Uh. Vince steps in. No, no, Roman Reigns needs the title, you know. He, he, he's number one. He should keep the U.S. title. Because it makes so much goddamn fucking sense, Vince. It, it doesn't. Why does Roman Reigns need the fucking title? And the way that Reigns won was complete and utter bullshit. Yeah. First of all, it was a, it was a good match, and then we'll get to the end. Jericho exposes the turnbuckle, and as the ref's trying to put it back on, he goes and gets the U.S. title. And Eddie Guerrero style throws the title at Reigns and drops yeah. to the to the mat like he just got hit. Yeah. The ref didn't see it. Any other person is getting disqualified in that yeah. match. Any other person. Any other person is getting disqualified. But because it's it was Roman Reigns. Reigns and because of the stipulation where if he gets disqualified, he loses the title, the ref's like, oh, I'm just going to let this one fly. That is so disrespectful to Eddie Guerrero. Like a Eddie lo- Guerrero's I- last match in the company before he died faced Mr. Kennedy and did the exact same fucking thing and Mr. Kennedy got disqualified while he was yeah. holding the title and just like yeah. that was the end of the match. He got disqualified. Yeah. No, Roman Reigns will not get disqualified for the same thing. That would have been gold for Jericho to win the title. That would have been hilarious. I don't know why. And then after it. that, to make it even worse, the refs put the title away, Reigns turns around into a cold breaker, and he kicks out. Yep, of course, Super Reigns. As he's now being called on Twitter, not getting DQ'd and kicking out of a fi- out of a finisher, and then what happens right after that? Gets up, one spear, one spear. All done. it takes is one spear, and it's over. Unbelievable. Roman Reigns does not deserve or need the U.S. title. For he just brings no prestige to it, like zero. The way he, he carries it too on his back, like he doesn't so- even give a shit about what what is he doing for the U.S. title right now for that mid card. Nothing. Because now you have a bunch of mid-card people that don't know what to fucking do or compete for. Because Reigns is in the main title picture <laughs> with the mid-card title. There's, not, there's no one backstage. See, that just makes absolutely zero sense. And wouldn't it be cool to have the dynamic with the best friends who both holding titles? Like yeah. Like Jericho and Why don't they pull the trigger on that? What? Jericho deserves the U.S. title. At least. My God. I, I'm so frustrated over Roman Reigns. It would be such a good, intriguing storyline. And it would it would actually help Reigns in his feud with Owens. It would. I, just, I hate the shoving of Roman Reigns down our throats. I feel for the guy because it's really not his fault. 
He just does what Derby tells him to do. It, but it sucks because now he's being that guy. He's the, the John Cena. You hear the crowd this week. It was half, let's go Roman. Roman sucks. Like the whole John Cena thing all yeah. over again. The Cena treatment. And then they wonder why they, they try to get him over so much. It's not working. Like they're, they're screwed now. The they, rest of his career is going to be like this. Like you fucked up Derby. And they have him win all the time. Like he can never lose a match. Yep. I remember when I was a Roman fan back when he was part of the Shield. I actually didn't mind Roman Reigns, and then after they sort of turned him into John Cena, is where it went fucking downhill. He- heaven forbid Chris Jericho gets a clean win on Roman Reigns, or even the or Eddie even Guerrero a dirty style. win. Like that should have that should have been instant DQ. I don't understand. Hopefully they bring that up. How was that not a disqualification? I don't understand. It's again Vince McMahon being a fucking senile old man. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing, and just well, no, he does know what he's doing. He wants Roman Reigns to win everything. But he'll do anything at all costs. So, unfortunately, WWE had a chance to correct their mistake from two weeks ago with the same match, and they didn't do it. They screwed up again. All right. Well, let's move on to some more dumpster fire garbage. Uh, we got Enzo and Cass and Rusev and Jinder. Oh, my God. Can someone please check Jinder Mahal? Yeah, can, we, can someone wellness test this guy? Because... My God, he had like like the a million insta- veins showing the, out of his like, chest. The instant I saw him, like holy shit, when did he? Like two weeks ago, he rock. was way smaller. This <laughs> when he became the Rock in two weeks, that's impossible. How is he not tested? How did, does someone not see is that he on part TV? time? Is he part time? How does no one see that on TV and be like, okay, we need to test that guy? Yeah, no, this this is part time. No, that that was, takes drugs. Take I've never part-time. seen Jinder Mahal anywhere close to that. That was. I think and everyone on Twitter was going nuts over this. Like it was just like, <laughs> like uh, even bef- like I said it before. I saw all the the Twitter backlash on. It. I found it hilarious afterwards. But that was crazy. Anyways, we'll get into the- Enzo comes out on a scooter in a scooter, and he d- <laughs> it was kind of funny because he did his little entrance on the scooter, on the still scooter. <laughs> going up and that down. That was the funniest part of this whole thing. And he he even turned it backwards and did his little mic point thing, yeah. and but- that was literally the only good part of this whole thing. Um, yeah. So we can't compete. So Cass has to face Rusev and, and you know Super Jude Gender, <laughs> Super um, Gender, <laughs> by himself. Yeah, and so. it being really quick, hot garbage squash win for Rusev. Yeah, because Gender got involved and Enzo couldn't do anything about it. And so it was pointless. And so just <laughs> stupid nonsense. I don't understand this feud. Why are Enzo and Cass not in facing a tag team? Unless Rusev and Gender have become some team. It looks like they have. Which whatever I I don't know I don't, they looks like they've completely forgotten about the Enzo and Lana thing too I don't know I just is it this right here this is the, what we were talking about earlier this feud if you can call it a feud it's the, conf- in the just a mess they can take that off of television like literally just refresh that scrap it all and just start something new because you're going to 2017 with this nonsense wow Raw deserves to lose every week if they're going to continue with this shit. Heaven forbid they give Rusev a shot at a, at the major title. So we're going to move on. Someone check Jinder Mahal, please. Someone wellness test that guy. That was just <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Hulk Hogan over here. I think Hulk Hogan looks small compared to Jinder this week. God. <laughs> Don't hinder Jinder. Yeah. <laughs> Don't steroid test Jinder. Uh, move on to number one contenders match. Nia Jax versus Bailey. Decent, I guess, even though... Nia Jax just like dominated the whole match. Yeah. We just got the typical inner... I knew it was going to happen. Sasha Banks is going to fucking come out. Something was going to happen with Sasha because they're gonna trying to build that feud up into WrestleMania. And Sasha comes out, distracts Nia, belly to... Crazy move. The only good part was the ending of belly to belly from the top rope. And literally, like, Nia landed straight on her back. And, like, the ring bounced. Yeah, I thought the <laughs> ring was going to collapse. <laughs> And then Bailey gets the win, Ob- the obvious win. Like we knew Bailey was going to be set up to face Charlotte. This was like the most obvious number one contenders match I've ever seen. And they even asked Charlotte on commentary, "What do you think if if Nia Jax wins this match?" And she didn't even comment on it. No, because she didn't even know what to say. Because it's not going to happen. It just Raw loves these quick f- finishes. Like this, this another and match. This is, like, and two is a two minute match. And this is the way that you end Nia Jax's undefeated streak with a most obvious number one contenders match. Heaven forbid it's Sasha Banks. Or heaven forbid she <laughs> loses at something like a pay-per-view. Yeah. Like, like build that up to be like, you know, she hasn't lost yet on Raw. And nope. Then, nope. They just ruined it. They made her look terrible here. Another reason why Raw sucks and a complete mess. I mean, and the official hashtag, dumpster fire, right here. I mean, I don't think Nia Jax has that much potential as a wrestler anyway, regardless. But she's still a good figure 
I guess, for the women's division. She brings something different that they haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. But to just have her, like... She's not like most girls. Okay, don't. <laughs> Unless you want to get her a t-shirt. No. But just to have her lose to Bailey like that. Like, I know it makes Bailey look really, really strong because she's the first one to beat Nia Jax. But one, it wasn't clean. And two, it was the most typical WWE thing I've, I've yeah. seen. Yeah. And then after the match, you got Charlotte and Bailey staring down. Sasha and Nia staring down. They're trying it's to make like, it look like they have two different feuds going on at the same time. Then you know, just keep them two separate. Why do they have to combine these feuds? Again, like, just what I mean. Like they, the main, they're trying to main focus. It looks like it's two feuds built into one. It makes no sense. I wouldn't be surprised it ends up in a fatal four way. You look at SmackDown's women's division. Alexa Bliss and Becky have nothing to do with Nikki Bella and Natty. Natty. Or Carmella. Or Carmella. Why do you got to mix these things together? Because they have no one else. They, have no, they literally, literally have no one else. four people. They, and then they you got put Alicia Fox on 205. Tamina, who's supposed to be back, Dana is not Brooke back. just whatever. Dana Brooke she's... disappeared somewhere. They have the longest premiering soon promo of life with Emelina. Oh my god, can we get into that? What is with that? <sighs> premiering oh. soon for like three months ago. I think this is they're doing this on purpose to make people hate her. Or, you think she's gonna get heat like like the whole I Eva Marie get thing? Cheered. To be honest, it depends on what city they're in. She's gonna get cheered. I think she's gonna get like a big like pop. Do you, do you think this gimmick's gonna fail? Uh, I want. I just. I see it failing, but I hope not because I have. But Emma is actually a good women's wrestler, unlike she, Eva Marie, who can't wrestle at all. Yeah, she needs to stay where she is. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I the I women's have, division is not even a women's it's division, bad. man. It's, it's a it's joke. Just so bad. It's a joke. But we do see some light at the end of the tunnel at live events. Liv Morgan has been wrestling with Sasha and Bailey, so she may be getting the call up soon. Good. Add another woman to the Raw division. They have so many people down in NXT right now. We got Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, Alaya, who's made her debut on SmackDown this week. She's not on SmackDown's roster, but she made her uh, her main roster debut. Asuka, Ember Moon. Asuka, Liv Morgan, Ember Moon. They have so many people down there that are going to be called up and help the divisions out. I mean, Raw needs more help than SmackDown, so we'll see. Yeah, and where's Tamina? Do we have to put the, the milk carton out from Tamina now? Where is she? I'm going to have to make that. Because uh, <laughs> Neville's off it now. Yeah. So we'll get into the main event. It is oh the Kevin Owens God. show. <laughs> this was the worst thing I've ever seen. The only good thing was... It is my boy Kevin Owens, man. But apparently Kevin, it was Kevin Owens' idea for the dude to come out having the sign on his head with the Kevin Owens show. <laughs> Apparently Vince approved that. Like that was Owen's idea. <laughs> that was great. Leave it to Owens to have an idea of, of a guy just coming out <laughs> with a Kevin Owens show and sign. I, in his the one part is like where he leaves and goes, "Yo, where are you going?" <laughs> he actually yells at him. Because <laughs> Goldberg comes out, yeah. right? Yeah, and he just yells at him. He's like, "Yo, where are you going?" <laughs> oh, I want to know who that guy was. Oh my god, we're right backstage goon. Um, Jericho starts by saying that he will be in the Royal Rumble. So a good announcement by Jericho. Owens doesn't take kind to of that. Um, he said he wasn't a fan of it, saying that he doesn't want to fight his friend Jericho at Mania because they're best friends. Jericho says, like, look, it doesn't matter who's champion. It could be you, it could be me. We're both the universal yeah. champion. <laughs> and Owens obviously just wants to be the one to hold the title. Can we can we quickly side note, talk about his set? Oh my so God. Jericho and Owens are at a nice table with some corporate yeah. chairs and for goldberg they have him a like a tiny chair. lawn chair <laughs> <laughs> like, like, the best part when goldberg comes out and says this is jericho's in the rumble he's first and then jericho sm- takes that chair and whips it out and jericho goes you know what happens when you throw around expensive furniture like that around <laughs> expensive, <laughs> furniture. expensive furniture <laughs> goldberg, you, know you just made the last goldberg says, yeah spear yeah. And it goes to Kevin Owens and Jackhammer. Whoa. And Kevin Owens is like, whoa, you can throw furniture around. Watch me. He throws the table out, <laughs> throws the chairs out. And then uh, uh, even before that, because they were they were just trolling Goldberg because he was supposed yeah. to come out. And Kevin Owens is like, we have somebody that needs no introduction. One of the greatest oh, yeah. superstars of all time. My guest, Chris Jericho. Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> so they never actually announced Goldberg coming out. He just uh, came out and interrupted <laughs> them. But it... <laughs> That was that, as much as that was funny. After that, it just went down. Okay, this there. is like this is right here is where it became the biggest shit show of all time. So Owens and Goldberg get in face to face. Then out comes Paul Heyman, and I'm going, okay, maybe Brock Lesnar's here. No, nope. no, nope, we don't have Brock Lesnar. Since at the Rumble, it'll be eat, sleep, elimination, repeat. Yep, that's gonna be a T-shirt. Already calling it. That's gonna be a fucking Brock. It'll Lesnar be available t-shirt. at Royal Rumble. Yep. 
Um, then Reigns comes out. Oh, yes! Because Roman Reigns needs to be out here right now. Yep, he really needs to God, interrupt this great. whole dumpster fire segment. And then, then Braun Strowman! I'm like, what the fuck is so happening? So we have a stare down between Reigns and Goldberg. I'm like, wow, I don't care. And then Strowman gets in and says... He will be in the Rumble, and he's going to be the one to win the Royal Rumble. And then Brains and Goldberg look at each other, and then double spear Braun Strowman. Oh, my God. Heaven forbid. You just have Braun Strowman look completely strong in, in, in that Sami Zayn. <laughs> squ- squash Sami Zayn in the, the last man standing match. The year already. <laughs> like, you made him look strong, and then you have him go out there and get double speared by Reigns and Goldberg. What was the point of that? And then that was it. Why wouldn't you have Strowman go over on somebody? I thought this was like they're supposed to build this up with this return of Goldberg. And then they added all this dumpster fire after. It literally com- made me completely forgot that it was it the It mixed of so Goldberg. much crap together. It made no sense. Goldberg's already looking ahead to when he wins the Rumble. He's, he should be focusing on Lesnar in the Rumble right now. God. He's already looking towards so the since, title. So from the Owens and Goldberg stare down until that end, I'm like... Did and then they really just scramble around and know what the and fuck. And then they after were doing? that, you had your universal champion Kevin Owens just leave. He just like was completely irrelevant in the segment after that. I thought he would try to attack Goldberg and Goldberg would spear him. I no. thought that was going to be the Kevin Owens show. No, I, that you have Owens do you nothing. You didn't need Reigns there. Fuck, that's solely Vince McMahon wanting Roman Reigns in the main event and Strowman, both the both his boner guys getting into the main event there. But he didn't even make Strowman look strong. He made him get double no. spear. And Roman Reigns just like. So what did he have to do? Really, with you needed you needed another guy with you to take down Strowman. So that made Roman Reigns look weak. So Vince was stupid on that part. No, because he wanted the whole the the potential of a Goldberg Roman Reigns oh stare down. You know, because that was really needed. And then Jericho and, and, and Owens Jericho left. and Owens were useless. And Owens is your universal champion. He's the guy that's supposed to be made to look strong here. And he was not even relevant. That's oh, why I think Kevin Owens does a, such a terrible job. With him as he, 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 as much as I love my boy Kevin Owens as champion right now, he, he doesn't need job. it right now because they're not doing anything with him. They're making him look terrible. They're making him look absolutely trash. So get rid of the title off him so he doesn't look trash anymore. Hopefully his next title reign will look a lot better than this one. I hope one. so. And he'll actually win it properly. But Who knows? Th- that whole segment just mixed so much crap together, just like the women's match. And it nothing made sense. Nothing. No. It would look like... They were just scrambling, like, okay, we're just going to do something. We got to, like, okay, you go out there, you right. go out there, and you go right, out where, there. Where are my guys? Roman, Roman, Braun, get out there. Do, do some shit. Spear Braun. Braun, you're going to get speared by Goldberg and Roman. Roman, oh. where are you? Oh, okay, where? stop. Oh. Okay, now you can go out there. <laughs> you don't want to know what I just did. Oh, God. Yeah, so for Monday Night Dumpster Fire, I give it 3.5 out of 10 this week. 3.5 coming from a, seeing my boy Cedric. I always give him a point for that. It's my boy Cedric, uh, Jericho and Owens, and Carl Anderson. That's it. Zero. Everything else, get the fuck off TV. Carl Anderson, Jericho and Owens for a little bit at the beginning of the segment, and Sasha Banks in those tight mm. leather shorts. Mm. SmackDown gets a solid two. SmackDown. Raw. Ooh. Sorry. Ooh. I botched. SmackDown, yeah, solid if I give SmackDown two. a 2 this week, you guys would be revolting. <laughs> solid Raw, two. Raw gets a solid 2. All right. So speaking of SmackDown, the blue brand, let's get into it. Great week once again. What else is new? SmackDown produces a great TV show, the best WWE product on TV right now, and it's mm. in our books, The A Show, 100%. It's comparable with NXT, too, but NXT is um, a different style. Yeah. So we'll start out, we start out with the Ambrose and Miz segment. Miz opened the show. It says that him and Maurice are the it couple of it. the WWE. <laughs> uh, they complain about Renee Young uh, slapping uh, uh, Miz and uh, expect and it said their New Year's resolution is to Miz is to be more forgiving and he asked Renee to come out and apologize. Instead, Ambrose comes out, Miz steps out of the ring, Maurice gets in the way and slaps the shit out of Dean Ambrose. They run off up to the top of the ramp. Ambrose grabs the mic and says, his job's already done for tonight. Your wife hits harder than you do. <laughs> Ooh. What a shot. Like that right there, that opening segment. Just beat Raw out of the water. Okay. They're they're set they're setting up their IC title match later in the night, which has already been already set in stone. And they just added fuel to the fire and just made Ambrose look like a nutcase by saying five words. <laughs> Ambrose is already over by saying five words. Like he's, that was he's, fucking amazing. He's pulling a Miz where Miz just goes savage on somebody like he did with Renee Young saying yeah. you're the one sleeping with him. And I like this whole 
woman, the whole girlfriends and and boyfriends feud here. This looks interesting. It looks like it's going to lead to maybe a mixed tag match. Renee's um, not a, a competitor. Right? She can wrestle though. She can uh, you know do like a DDT or something. Like she doesn't have to be in there long. But uh, you finally see the end ring return of Maurice. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll see. No matter see. <laughs> so we moved on. We had Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. Really, really good match here from both competitors. Um, it's probably the final chapter of this feud. Yeah, I think Corbin will have a huge year in 2017. Uh, and Corbin won clean here. And this was solely due to the frustration from Dolph Ziggler as he was uh, punching Corbin in the corner and he almost got the five count on him. But uh, he got so pissed off and the referee had to push him off and he tried running at him again and ran right into the end of days. Corbin winning clean. Man, the guy doesn't win dirty. He just wins clean. That's why I don't understand how this guy doesn't get put in the main event picture, which I think he is going to after we'll talk about later. Um, Just Barrett Corbin winning clean again. And then Ziggler... uh, Again, very frustrated, which cost him the win. Corbin was going to grab a steel chair and hit uh, Ziggler with it after the match, and Kalisto comes out. I'm like, okay, so they're not fucking done with this shit. And again, Kalisto they're... comes out with a chair. Comes out, um, saves Ziggler, and then Ziggler gets frustrated. Super kicks Kalisto. The crowd chanting yes. Yeah, <laughs> the crowd getting the yes checks. They, I look like they want a Ziggler heel turn. <laughs> But oh, man. and then you get backstage, and then and we see an Apollo Cruz sighting. Yeah, Apollo Cruz has been sighted, ladies and gentlemen, on SmackDown this week. So if you missed it, go watch it and confront Ziggler about what he did. Ziggler's just c- clearly frustrated. Apollo Cruz is like, I'm making it my business because Kalisto's my friend. friend apparently, and gets attacked by Ziggler. <laughs> he gets held back by Mojo Rawley and Rhino. <laughs> Apparently those three. Where is Heath Slater? What? Why is Ryan injured? Remember he oh, got yeah, botched right. last week. So, <laughs> so what kind of conversation are Apollo Crews, Zach, know, uh, hilarious Rhino, and Mojo Riley's partner is hurt too? <laughs> so the people that aren't hurt in the tag teams had to help Apollo Crews. No, <laughs> See, this is a way. This is a land of opportunity. Your your partner gets injured. You still get used, and you still get put on TV on SmackDown. <laughs> and, Maybe they should put uh, Mojo Rawley and Rhino as a tag team together just until the, the other two come back. <laughs> the other two come back and Slater and Zack Ryder team up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I actually want to see that. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, then Ziggler just beats the crap out of him yeah. out of frustration. I'm not going to jump the gun and say it's a full-out heel turn yet because it's just Ziggler getting really frustrated. But I do see but, now a ziggler Apollo Cruz feud. Well, maybe we're going to see more Apollo, Apollo Cruz. Cruz. That right there. Ziggler versus Apollo Cruz. Yes. Yes, and I think if they do that happen. match, if they do that match, Ziggler has to be heel. Yeah. So I'm interested to see next, like next week. I want to tune in to see yeah. what Ziggler says. Yeah, if get he, this right here makes us want to tune in to SmackDown every goddamn week. If he, if I want to see what he's going to say on the mic, if he's like really going to turn against the fans and say like I never needed you, I never needed anybody, because mm-hmm. he did say that. I wonder if he, he gets a slowed backstage. down version of his theme. Oh. Or goes the back world. to the old perfection. Oh theme. yeah, yeah. He headbutted Apollo Cruz. Yeah, that was brutal. So, so. I, I'm liking this new fire out of Ziggler. Maybe at least to a heel turn. I don't know yet. It's too early to say, mm-hmm. but I like it. Uh, moving on, Becky Lynch versus La Luchadora. Oh so La Luchadora is back. And there's a lot of people saying it's this one NXT chick. I keep forgetting her name, um, and it looks like it actually is her. So we'll see whenever she gets unmasked. Um, it was a decent match. It looked like Lula Chidora is kind of holding back, though. I think that's doing it on purpose until they finally unmask her to see what her potential is. She goes up for the Twisted Bliss, yeah. this random girl. Yeah. Um, and then everyone's like, oh, it's Alexa Bliss. So after Becky makes her tap, there's a little twin magic that happens. Uh, Becky rips off the mask who she thinks is La, Ju- La Luchador, who she just wrestled. And it's Alexa Bliss. And everyone's like, what the fuck? And then out from behind is the real La Luchadora. And they both start attacking Becky Lynch. So who is La Luchadora? And I guess she's now like Alexa Bliss's like partner in crime, I guess. I don't know. know. Something going on there. Alexa looked good in the Luchadora. (laughs) I could tell it was her right away. I was like, that's my girl. (laughs) Anyways. One of the one of the best things of the night, Cena and Styles contract signing, unfucking believable. This was oh my god, Styles basically saying that he's been carrying SmackDown, um, saying that SmackDown doesn't need Cena. He's a has been. Uh, Styles saying that Cena won't be as good as The Rock in Hollywood, and he's not as good as Styles in the ring either. Um, just, just, just jabbing at <laughs> Cena throughout this entire promo, like basically saying how it is. Again, when they allow uh, Styles to break the fourth wall, 
He's just fucking amazing, man. I love when they, they allow the wrestlers him to say on that. Raw. If, if the rumors are true that Vince wants him on Raw, like, no. No, because no, he's not going to allow him to do that. Um, so, Cena comes back at him in typical Cena form. Yeah, yeah, hustle, loyalty, respect, I uh, have all the passion, blah, 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 blah. Literally, all, everything John Cena just said right after, I'm like, wow, typical John Cena. Just complaining, like, oh, I've been here. Everyone says I've been gone. I'm actually back and blah, blah. Cena, you were gone for four fucking months, man. <laughs> it's true what, what AJ Styles just said. You are literally, it has been, and don't deserve to be on SmackDown. And don't deserve that title shot. It's fucking stupid. But no, John Cena, I'm John Cena. Recognize. Yeah, but you know they want Recognize to be- what, Cena? Recognize that you were gone for four months? And that you get handed gift opportunities when you come back? And then there are people that would say, yeah, he's earned it because he, he was on the road for 10 years or however many years he was busting his ass. But, like, you, you don't just get to leave then and come back whenever you want after doing that. It still doesn't make any sense. But he's still the poster child of WWE, so he can I come back he, and do what he wants. He would have had to come if he. I think if he, he's allowed to come back and be able to compete number one contendership, not get instant title shot. Yeah. Like, the, the, the match everyone wanted to see was Styles versus Taker at Royal Rumble. But it looks like they're swaying more towards Styles and uh, or Cena and Undertaker at WrestleMania. So my guess is Cena is going to beat AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble, become 16-time world champion, and face Undertaker for the title at WrestleMania. So Most likely. I, there's no way AJ Styles is having the title going into WrestleMania, and it's no. sad yeah, because he deserves it. And he's look what he's done for SmackDown since the brand split. He's elevated it to new heights. And Without Cena champion. there. Yeah, where was Cena there? That's what I mean. This is the whole first part of that promo with Styles was so true. And I loved how he's able to tell it like it is. Um, so after they burst, both sign it, out comes Baron Corbin. I'm like, oh, here we go. This is interesting. And Baron Corbin here, I, this is the best I've ever seen him. This What he said at, 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 when coming out here just elevated Baron Corbin like, my God, he's the best. He's He's got to be up there now after this promo. Comes out. It says he's going to be the first SmackDown superstar to be in the Royal Rumble and win it at the same time. Saying he's had a big year winning. The, uh, he, he debuted and won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Then he, he doesn't care if it's Styles. He doesn't care if it's Cena. He's going to win the title at WrestleMania and kick whoever's ass it is. Perfect. It's all you had. This is raw. Take notes here. This is all you had to do to push someone into to build a new talent. Right here, building a new talent. Yeah, and then Cena gets in, in Corbin's face because he's like, I know this punk ain't going to fight me. I'll fight the toughest guy in the room. So look, you're being referred to as the toughest guy in the room by John Cena. You know you're going to get over, and you, you have that potential to be is main he, event caliber. Is he the realest guy in the room? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so they look like they're going to fight, and then Cena kicks <laughs> – Styles kicks Cena in the back of the head <laughs> the cheap shot. <laughs> and uh, Baron Corbin stands over top and goes, looks like Styles is right. Your time is up and that is going to lead to a match next week against john cena. corbin and cena wow. this is great this is it doesn't even matter if corbin loses this match it's going to make him look so much better mm-hmm. just facing john cena it's going to put him in that main title picture and make him look wait. credible i think again i think baron corbin wins the title some point in 2017 he's going to be champion I could see next week, I could see Styles coming out and fucking Cena over and Corbin winning this match. Yeah, and then he, he has that thing to argue against Dave Ryan. Look, I beat John Cena, your poster boy. How come I don't get a title match? This is huge for Baron Corbin. Mm-hmm. Like That'd be crazy if he won the Royal Rumble. That'd be nuts. When the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal and the Royal Rumble in the same year as his de- main roster debut. I don't think it's possible this year. I think he has potential to po- we win one in the future, yeah, though. Yeah. But I think this is definitely great for Baron Corbin being elevated to that main card in yeah. the main title picture. Yeah, I agree. With John Cena yeah. and Styles. So we move on. Maurice finds Renee Young backstage and just slaps the shit out of her as soon as she sees her. <laughs> it says that's for slapping her, her husband. So basically payback for her husband. Um, she says, don't you ever touch my husband. Great. God. Thanks, Maurice. Um, so we move on. Oh, my God. We move on to something. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on here. But Carmella faces Aliyah. Aliyah makes her uh, debut on SmackDown from NXT. But we get more of this Ellsworth and Carmella stuff. And I don't know what the fuck's going on here. I think what you said is true. It's eventually going to lead to Carmella turning on Ellsworth. She's just um, using him right now. She wore his T-shirt. They've and... been called Carmelsworth or Chinarella. Or Chinella, sorry, Chinella. 
As Every guy in the Amer- in the world is like jealous, jealous of right Ellsworth. Now. Anyways, Eli making her Eli making her SmackDown debut. Good PC talent there. Uh, we saw her at NXT uh, Toronto in her hometown. She got a really good pop when she came out in that like three on three. It was like her, Liv Morgan, and Amber Moon against uh, Billy Royce. Kay, Peyton Royce. Yeah, I think it was a Mandy Rose. Oh no, that no, boxing was that chick. New, that yeah, yeah. The new but girl. yeah, she got a huge pop because she's in her hometown. So our Canadian girl here making her SmackDown debut. It's a decent match. I mean, Carmella just dominating most part, and Ellsworth helps Carmella win basically by distracting Alaya, and then That's gets what Ellsworth her, does best, I guess, yeah, right? And, and then helps Carmella win. And Carmella's all happy and cheering with Ellsworth. Yay! Yeah, and the, I'll, I'll jump forward to talking smack. They had those two on, and Daniel Bryan and. Then uh, Renee Young are asking them questions, and Carmella is just acting like the typical like she could tell she's being fake, but she's like, "Oh, thank you. I love like I love yeah. the way James is. He's so nice to me, so sweet. We go Something's places. Something's happening here. Something's gonna happen. He holds my hand and yeah. all this crap. And Ellsworth's like, "Yeah, you know." What? You know what I see? I'm sensing it right now. There's gonna be three feuds on for the women's division on SmackDown. Can you guess who I'm thinking of is gonna <laughs> make it James? Appear. Yep, Mickey, Mickey James, James versus gonna, Carmella. Carmella's going to turn on Ellsworth and Mickey James is going to come to Ellsworth's rescue and there's going to be a Carmella versus Mickey James feud. I can see it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know why they paired Carmella with Ellsworth. I don't know either. I can't. I Whatever. We'll move on. Um, Brazongo versus American Alpha. <laughs> Jobber but match. Potential to be reason, a good match. But it ended up in less than a minute. Fucking really quick match. What the fuck? What are they doing with Brazongo now with this fashion police thing? They literally, they become the VOD villains of Raw. They just get a job of, of whenever Smackdown. they appear. Of SmackDown. But it's sad. I guess this setup, this was only a setup for what happened after the match. The Whites cut a promo on American Alpha saying that they are coming back for their titles next week. So it looks like we're going to get a title rematch next week. Good. I actually want to see this happen again. Uh, Wyatt do deserve another title rematch and I think they can put on a really good match I think Orton and Bray Wyatt are going to put on a re- unless it's Orton and Harper a free bird, free, uh, free bird rule so I think it's going to be a really good match next week for the titles I just don't like how they squash Brazongo though make them look terrible I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they won back their titles next week maybe I can I can see it even though I don't want to <laughs> I love my boys American Alpha and finally getting their titles so don't be like Raw and uh, yeah, play hot flip, potato. Yeah, flip flopping these titles yeah. back and forth. Let's move on to something here that actually was very, very personal and very intense this week. Nikki Bella and Natty's in ring segment. Holy shit, man! Talking about breaking the fourth ball, they broke some walls where I didn't think WWE could go. Okay, I didn't think they would let them do this. They brought in family into this shit. Basically, Nikki saying that Natty isn't original. How she copies her her uncle's theme song and finisher. Um, Natty's saying that Nikki uses her sex appeal to get all, what she wants, and it, and when it fades, John Cena will leave her, and then she'll die alone. Wow! <laughs> I didn't think you could tell something. You could say to someone that they will die on TV on WWE TV. This this so called PG product. Life sucks, and then you die. <laughs> it's style. like they were just both of them just breaking the fourth wall. And Not just even going that. so it personal. A, it was a good promo. Like I liked it. I think it, I think great. it helped the I think it helped the match that they're gonna have next they, week. Their match is gonna be very, very intense. And another like a secondary feud. I'm excited to see a match next week between yeah. Nikki Bella and Natalia. <laughs> Imagine that. We would have said that a year ago. Okay, we would have ne- we would have been like, oh great, here's a fucking boring ass divas match. No, no, no. Now that they actually care about the women's division and applying Especially feuds on SmackDown. and personal issues, like I don't even think they're going to go this far. But still, it actually makes the feud better when they went that far. Crazy. I don't think they were allowed to do that. But that whatever. They and did. you look at it, they leave it alone. They don't yeah. do what Raw does and mix these fucking things together it, all it, the time. Nikki's punch to Natty look almost real. Like I'm I like, think, oh my god, did yeah. she actually? I punch think her? I think Nikki was somewhat pissed. Yeah, I think she actually hit her most. Because like Natty almost looked like she was crying after. <laughs> oh, I'd be interesting to see who's Total Divas. And, that. <laughs> and that's that's when WWE's great when they when they they're treading that line of is it real or is it fake? Yeah, and it it's just makes the feud job. better. Because why SmackDown's better? Um, and that was a secondary women's feud. That's not yeah. even the main title feud. I, I like what they're doing with the main title feud too, with the whole La Lucha Door thing. Like it's kind of mysterious. And Alexa and, Bliss, yeah, and nothing. Nobody really knows what they're going with it, but it, it kind of makes sense for Becky to be ganged up on. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, 
Get into the main event now. Ambrose versus Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Wow. Really, really good match. Like, this, this pay per view quality. Took, like, 20 minutes. Like, this, this was, match was long. This was pay per view quality match. And and I complained earlier about Raw giving that away for free. This only made sense, though. Because this was the main event, at least. Of the first. And they built this feud enough that they can't wait for the Rumble. Like, they need to have this title match now. And it produced. SmackDown just continues to produce watchable main events. Everything that's been on Raw in the main events has been shit and unwatchable. Or segments. Lately. Or segments. SmackDown actually has main event matches. And it, this one was exceptional. Just unbelievable. There's the one part where Ambrose is on the outside. Uh, Maurice slaps Ambrose. The ref was going to call the DQ because technically that is a DQ. Ambrose, like, sees it and steps into the ring and stops the ref and says, no, 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 throw her out instead. So the ref finally agrees, throws Maurice out. Crowd's going absolutely ballistic what, at this point. What's with the Shield members being able to convince the refs not to do something? <laughs> yeah. Reigns on Raw and Ambrose. Yeah, and then now Ambrose's like, what is this? They didn't do that on purpose. Wow. Um, so as uh, the ref is kicking Maurice out, from behind, Miz comes in with the, the IC title, hits Ambrose in the back of the head, and Ambrose kicks out. I honestly thought at that point it was over. Like, Miz is going to, Maurice gets thrown out, but Miz still ends up picking the victory. Kicks out. He's tr- he tries to pick up Ambrose to put him into the f- scroll cushioning finale. Reverse, dirty deeds, and Ambrose actually wins. New champion. Wow. I couldn't believe it. I did not see this coming like at all. I thought Miz was going to retain in some stupid fashion once again. I thought maybe they wow. would hold the I thought maybe they would hold the title change till Royal Rumble mm. and maybe have the match at Royal Rumble. But as someone pointed out on Twitter, I think the decision is going to be reversed next week. I see it happening because Technically, it should have been called a DQ, and the ref has to do his job. He can't be forced to listen to the wrestler. And again, you can do the same thing on Raw with what happened with Roman Reigns. But they're Reigns not going to punish Roman not, Reigns. No, no, they're not going to punish Roman Reigns. No, but never. They'll punish Ambrose. Oh, yeah. And I guarantee the title will be reversed next week, or Miz will get another shot at it, and he'll win it back next but week. But I do really like this feud. Yep. Ambrose um, and Miz feud. Because really Ambrose good. has nothing. He can't do anything in the main event right now with the whole Cena and Styles thing and Corbin. Yeah. So he's he's out of the main title picture for now. And who else is Miz going to f- wrestle yeah. right now? No Just one. This feud makes sense. I love how they're incorporating... They finally incorporated the Renee Young thing, and finally, everyone knew about Renee Young and Ambrose, but they finally mentioned it. They, and they, they, they finally came out about yeah, it. And now it actually, they've incorporated it, and it's been literally the highlight of yeah. this entire feud. And Renee so, Young's done a good job with it, not even being an in ring talent. Yeah. The so. backstage thing. And Ambrose winning, I mean, like I said, I had mixed feelings about it. Like, I, I want Ambrose to win the title. I just thought it was too early in their first match. Yeah. Okay. But. I can I, I see why they did it, so I'm not I'm not mad about it. I just personally I would have liked to see Ambrose chase a little bit more. Hey, and who knows? Maybe they'll uh, they'll reverse the decision next week and Miz will have the title again. Who My knows? boy but, Ty Dillinger to come up and win it from him. But I I really like the direction of this feud, and it makes me want to tune in next week again. Everything yep. that happened on SmackDown, everything from wants start to me- finish this week. This is why I don't understand why SmackDown didn't win the actual TV ratings because SmackDown was watchable start from to start finish. to finish. Besides the Brizongo squash, yeah, everything else was watch. It, maybe the Carmella thing was, meh, but. Everything's watchable. Like, I want to, like, miss my class next week. Yeah. My first <laughs> class next week, I want to miss it to yeah, watch The Carmella it. thing was watchable because our girl from Toronto, Aaliyah, made her SmackDown debut. Sure. So. And Carmella's hot Gotta as hell. Gotta support the Canadian. Oh, yeah. Carmella's Can't hot as hell. Can't teach so that. I, yeah, yeah. Bada bing. Realist chick in the ring. Yeah, and uh, turtle out of a shell, whatever. <laughs> Carmel's worth. God. <sighs> Makes me crazy. Anyways, I give SmackDown this week a 9 out of 10. Um, I only give it a non-perfect one again because of the whole Carmella Ellsworth. I'm not too keen on it either. And Brazong will get in job. I don't like that either. I think those guys are some serious talent. But, yep, that's the only reason why I don't give a perfect uh, raw or perfect 10 rating. So I'm giving SmackDown this week a 9 out of 10. I'm going to give it the same rating. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, SmackDown was so – and it, again, it, when you have a show, like we said, that makes you want to tune into the next week, that's – what produces a great episodic TV show, WWE. Not the Raw bullshit, because I don't give a fuck about Raw next week. 
all I, all I get, care about is what they've promoted, and that's Undertaker and HBK, but they haven't and, promoted jack shit all after that. And Raw having to go back into the cookie jar and bring back old retired talent. Yeah, it's not, it, I'm not saying it's a good way to do it. It's just it, that's the only thing that's going to bring me in to watch Raw, see what Undertaker says and it's what HBK just, it, says. I don't even care because yeah. why do I want to care about these guys in 2017? Yeah. They should start building their own talent on Raw, but Raw yeah. can't do that because they're, they're not yeah. willing to give. But besides that, I would have had shot. nothing to, to look forward to for Raw. Nothing. I don't. I don't have any. I don't like anything. It's sad because they have good wrestlers over there, like Sami Zayn, yeah. Jericho, Owens, yeah. Rollins, Sasha Banks, Charlotte. Yeah, but I don't give list. a yeah. flying fuck about anything that's going on on Raw. I could yeah. care less about any of their feuds. Yep, I agree. So that was our ratings for SmackDown and Raw, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll get into our WWE headline. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, guys. The episode, uh, the part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. And we have seven topics this week. That's seven. Right. Seven. It's gonna be interesting. Seven topics. I that's interesting because that's how how much of a landslide SmackDown beat Raw by this week was seven <laughs> seven marks. Uh, and speaking of, first news is Raw wins the ratings war this week. As I said earlier in the show, Raw had a two point eight this week, while SmackDown had a two point five. Ugh, I don't, and that's only due solely due to Goldberg. Apparently, great. Yeah, what are they going to do next week with HBK and Undertaker? Yeah, it's going to be it's going to win that way. I just they stupid. can't win without bringing back part timers. Yeah. Of course, Smack, I think they do it on purpose. SmackDown has a good show during the weeks that Raw brings back these cookie jar people to get win in the ratings. Just dumb, dumb, just dumb, 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 dumb. dumb. Anyways, move on. Speaking of Goldberg. Uh, details on his current contract. It includes th- three pay-per-view appearances, which are the Royal Rumble, Fastlane, which is something new, and no one knew if he's going to be a Fastlane or not, and WrestleMania. He's expected to make all Raw regular appearances through to WrestleMania to promote those three pay-per-views. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so Goldberg's going to be here till WrestleMania. <laughs> it's supposed to be a one-off. Yep. And now he's here till WrestleMania. He's got the whole... Sure. Bautista Why contract. not? Just fade away into the sunset after yeah. his WrestleMania match. Yeah. Why not? I, I'm okay with that. I just want to see okay Goldberg WrestleMania one more time. Actually have a match. And just, just longer see, than a know. minute. Yeah. Um, number three, Anthem Sports and Entertainment finally acquires TNA. They had TNA or part of the stock earlier in the year when, they, when they're when they about to go bankrupt to keep them alive. They've announced today that they have purchased the majority stocks and control of TNA. And Dixie Carter is no longer president of TNA. She is now a, advi- a server on the advisory board for Fight Media Group. Great, mm-hmm. Dixie Carter. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but TNA is still alive. They, they're not dying <laughs> it's, yet. It's not the the grave is. Someone pulled them back out of the grave and, and, and to open they the got coffin. One hand. They got one hand out of the coffin. You know, did the whole Undertaker thing out of yeah. the grave. <laughs> uh, next bit of news: Alberto Del Rio in talks with TNA. Oh my lord! Currently, there are still talks on and off since September. Um, likely not to happen anytime soon, but there's still nothing set in place, like nothing signed. So I don't want to watch TNA. Don't give me God, a reason I wonder, to watch he'll, TNA. He'll, I wonder if what he's going to be called. <laughs> Alberto El Patron. <laughs> what is Rio of Del Alberto doing in the Impact? Rio show? of Del. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, he'll right come there. out as his real name. Yeah, <laughs> Robert, uh, uh, Alberto, Alberto, Alberto Rodriguez. Rodriguez. <laughs> what is Alberto Rodriguez doing in the Impact Zone? And he comes out with Ricardo Rodriguez, who will be God, named. God, God, comes out with her or his girlfriend Soraya Bevis. <laughs> Paige. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, Braun Strowman is officially on Tinder. For you Braun wow. Strowman fans out there, fangirls, you can swipe right on him. Swipe right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Reddit user was matched up with with Strowman and screenshotted it and sent it to Reddit. His description says as follows. He is 6'8", 375 pounds, country boy. I like lifting weights and eating steaks. Wow. Wow. What a description. What a hunk. And his picture is him in a hot tub with no shirt on, just flexing. All right. My God. Ladies. Yeah. Better take a number. Right there. That beard. Mm. Wow. I guess this means he's single now because he, apparently he did have a girlfriend, but who knows? Maybe she squa- he squashed her. I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. You would say that. God. Anyways, moving on. 
First Hall of Famer inductee announced for 2017. It is Diamond Dallas Page. I'm feeling the bang right now. Yeah. Well, well, well deserved. Well deserved for DDP. Yep. Big impact for WCW and WWF when he came over. Uh, DDP Yoga definitely been a revolutionary uh, product and and. You know, yoga system itself, a lot of people have gotten a lot of help from it. Uh, a lot of inspirational stories Scott from those Hall, people. Jake the Snake. Yeah. Apparently, he's helping Vader now. Wow. Jericho was not able to wrestle anymore until he took DDP yoga. So, so he's helped a out a lot of people. Yeah. So good for DDP. Definitely well deserved. Uh, last bit of news WrestleMania 34 location has been revealed, and it is going back to New Orleans. Great. Back like to New Orleans. Like it needs to be going back there. It was there fucking three years ago, and now we're getting it back in New Orleans. It's the same carousel of pay, of WrestleMania every year. We get New Orleans, somewhere Florida. in Florida, somewhere in New York, yep. somewhere in California, probably LA, Texas, Texas and somewhere we'll there, right and the same five things over yeah. again. They should have been in Toronto. They look what they did for NXT TakeOver and, and Survivor Series. I think they, they could have done something. I don't think they'll come here because our conversion rate sucks. Yeah. They can't and, and make now enough the money. dollar's going even worse. So. They can't make enough yeah. money. But um, even like somewhere closer. That would have been nice. <laughs> so we're going to scratch our WrestleMania 34 plans unless we decide to nope. actually go to New Orleans. I don't, I don't ever want to go to New Orleans as an Atlanta Falcons uh, fan. I don't want to step foot in yeah. that city. Um, so probably going to be announced next week on Raw since Raw next week is from New Orleans. They'll probably have an announcement for that, whether it be on TV or not. Fantastic. But yeah, WrestleMania 34. Well, Wallets. can't be much worse than 33. 30 was when they broke the streak, right? Yeah. Yep. So maybe Undertaker, this is his last match at the same 34 place. 34 next that year? He maybe. Maybe gets the, the redemption. The what if they do like a redemption storyline? Or it's Brock oh Lesnar and Taker. Lesnar and Taker. What if, it, again? what if he wins, it erases the, the streak? <laughs> yeah, if I win, I will take the one out yeah, of the streak. The, the, the match doesn't count. <laughs> Or, yeah, like, do career yeah. versus the one. <laughs> the oh, one. my. God. Don't tell me this is a real storyline. Oh, God, if that ever happens, I don't know if I could get behind it at all. I don't even know. <laughs> Whatever. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for week number 39 of the Lowdown Show. Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown, and 205 Live, which we forgot this week, but you know what? It was a buzzkill this week. The crowd ruined it. it was- Jacksonville, Florida, terrible. Yeah, you made the list, and you made us not talk about 205 Live. Produced good matches, Tajiri coming back, and you just were, you shot him down. You shot him. And I, you take notes from NXT Melbourne this yeah. week. My lord, that crowd was hype. Yeah. So, also during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment, Lou Gallows Polls, which will return next week, hopefully. And there will be headlines, as you just heard, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Remember, every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. If you'd like to join the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read and discussed in the podcast, tweet us at Noah's Bard, WP, or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week, I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the Blissful Boss, Corporate Cappy, Mr. Corporate himself. Raw, stop blissing me off. Yeah, and as 2017. <laughs> stop blissing them off. And as always, we are here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown.